would have thought that Burrito Boy and Salad Girl were really going to end up to get... Wait, 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 wait. That's not the right video. Hold up. Wait, wait. Boruto fans, how are we feeling after that recent chapter? That... I'm not going to lie to y'all. That brought me back. Hello. I'm back in the fandom. <laughs> Props to Masashi Kishimoto. Bro really just hopped back onto Boruto and just decided to make everything actually matter. On my perspective of things, I, for the longest time, wasn't reading Boruto Naruto Next Generations because... Well, I mean, they lost me. They they really lost me. They lost me. Like I I, I just thought everything was whack. I thought everything was weird. I thought what the de the decisions they were making at the end and the climax of this Jigen uh, saga, whatever you want to call it, or whatever you want to call that, where Naruto fights him and goes into Baryon mode. I thought it was hype, but then some of those decisions just didn't feel correct. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. And then obviously. After that, Masashi Kishimoto came back and somehow he brought back Konohamaru. Like, somehow Konohamaru now <laughs> exists in the series. He's crazy. Now, nah, all jokes aside, before Masashi Kishimoto came on, and I don't, I don't want to say that it was all him. Maybe this was just what they were leading to either way. But before then, it just felt like Boruto was like trying to do something that Naruto or had established years for and it just didn't feel correct it didn't feel like they were actually trying to themselves establish anything it just felt like they were trying to jump start into like the like a like a second phase of the boruto series if that makes sense like it didn't feel like everything was prettiest like all the kids feel overpowered like they just feel super strong for like boruto is just gifted like, he's just a gifted shinobi. Like, and I guess it makes sense because he's the son of the Hokage. But Naruto, like, it just doesn't make sense because Naruto was the son of a Hokage too. But that boy wasn't gay. That boy was stupid as hell. And I guess it's also a product of, like, environment. And because Naruto's actually present and uh, Rip Minato's, you know, in the other realm. Maybe that's 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 probably what it is. But uh, there's no explanation for it other than, you know, he's the son of the Hokage. So I guess, uh, you know, I could let that one slide. But there were other things like they set up a new Team 7 with Salad Girl, Boruto Boy, and Snake Guy. Um, and Snake Guy being, I guess, the Sasuke or whatever. Or maybe Boruto is the Sasuke and Snake Guy is... I don't know. I don't know. The point is that they have archetypes that they could have done. But it felt like they were trying to do archetypes that Naruto set up. But were failing at doing any of them. And honestly, right now, if you feel like you're upset with me, you're just like, what, who is this guy to talk about? shit about talk smack about boruto listen it's okay i just gotta give you this before i come into what we're at right now because i need to explain myself as to why they brought me back because like i said prior to this prior to what happened in the latest chapter i was pretty much i did drop the series i really did because i didn't have any hope for it i didn't think that it was going to live up to anything that naruto had done no it just you know what it was it it, it after reading and seeing jujutsu kaisen it, while i was reading boruto it felt like boruto really didn't need to exist it felt like jujutsu kaisen was the proper follow-up to naruto that boruto fell flat in every aspect that jujutsu kaisen did really well and that's just my opinion. That's just what I think. I just think there's certain elements and certain things that Jujutsu Kaisen did that make it seem like Boruto should have did that. Like the whole like Sukuna and, and Yuji uh, uh, thing, the dilemma that they were sort of doing and how it happened. Everything felt very organic where the whole Momoshiki and Boruto thing, it was a cool idea. But the more you kept seeing it, the more they just kept using it as a plot device. So that anytime anything needed to be resolved, they would somehow get Momoshiki involved and he would take over Boruto's body and then uh, the overpowered little boy came to life and then everything was solved. I don't know. And then obviously I'm not even mentioning Kawaki. I do like Kawaki. I think Kawaki has a best, the best probably story. I think that's why he's probably the popular character in the series is because he actually has like build up. He actually has character development. He's actually a reasonable character and everything that he does makes sense because it's like to what he's um pushing forward so he's a good character for sure i just i don't like introducing him was kind of interesting because you have mitsuki and sada and, and salad girl and mitsuki feels like felt for like basically 90 percent of the series up until now like useless like he just was there 
Same thing with Konohamaru. Same thing with all the other ninja. Same thing with even Salad Girl. They all just felt like they were there. Even when they were included in like the a previous previous arcs, it felt like they were just included because they had to be because they're part of a team. Even though Konohamaru never went everywhere anywhere with them like bro konohamaru was the is the worst sensei i know people love konohamaru but the way they wrote him he's the worst sensei like kakashi at least went after and like did things with the students to make sure i don't know they don't fucking die but konohamaru out here not doing nothing and all of a sudden he comes into the play and is like now we're a team which again it's too coincidental to when masashi kishimoto hopped back onto the series for me not to think that he said you know what we got to do this and even with what Masashi Kishimoto had played out for them, it just felt like they dropped the ball. And I, I'm i glad that they kind of now, now talking about the recent chapter, I'm glad that they did what they did by kind of almost 180-ing and resetting the story a little bit, like retconning it a little bit by making Boruto now the villain to the Hidden Leaf and Kawaki, obviously the Hokage's son. It makes sense for Kawaki's character and what he's doing. So I like that. Good continuation to his character. And, but it also finally has made them there be stakes for the character of Boruto. Because by God, were they tried so hard to create stakes with every arc. And just by doing so, they just decided to go Dragon Ball 1 times 100 by just making every villain over freaking power. None of it made sense, but now this, this has me excited because this has me thinking the possibilities that they could go with the Boruto character, things they could do to make him different, make him different from Naruto, make him different from Sasuke, make him a completely his own character, which I'm finally glad that I'm, they're going to be doing that since he's the main character and he almost doesn't feel like he should be. Sometimes he feels like he's like, I don't. I don't know how I feel about Burrito Boy. But obviously, I'm excited about what they're leading up to and the change here. It sort of is finally leading towards the ending that we saw at the beginning of the series that Masashi Kishimoto put there with Kawaki and Boru Boru Burrito Boy um, going against each other and Kawaki saying, I'm going to send you the same place that I sent the seventh, which is clearly we know what happened there. You, Naruto and Hinata got whooped into a whole completely di different dimension that Kawaki could send them to. And yeah, it feels like there's actual stakes now. It feels like things matter. It feels like these characters actually have purposes. It doesn't feel like things are just happening because vil new powerful villains show up and because these powerful villains all of a sudden are Otsutsuki. And it seems like Otsutsuki cells are really what's kind of like drive the power scaling of Boruto. Um, it just revolves around the Otsutsuki and what they were able to do, which I like what they're starting to do with that. Now with the last few chapters is about explaining how that jutsu is different from what we're used to seeing and how it's sort of like the creation of other jutsu. And I like that. I like that they're world building. I like that, that they're doing things. I like that there's stuff happening that, uh, you know, bounces off of what was pre-existing and can lead back to the previous series it's really well done i'm i i gotta give props where props are as much of the negative stuff that i was talking i think i do like what they're doing now i do like what, what the direction that they're taking this and i do like what's gonna be happening like i said i i had dropped the series man i did i had dropped the series i was so painstakingly tired of it after when they killed kurama i'm gonna be honest with you i was done i just felt like i they were just killing him to increase stakes and to make it finally like Naruto could and I get it I get it everybody that reads Boruto is like this is all gonna blah, 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 blah. and it's like yeah sure whatever but it just felt so dumb to have like a berry on mode when Naruto and Sasuke already felt like they didn't do anything and they don't contribute anything to the story other than being like the two guys that they call every time there's a calamity and then even when they can't solve it, Boruto comes out with Momoshiki, like I said before, and then fixes. Uh, just talking about all that, the repetitive storytelling that they were doing just really, hurt, just really hurts my brain looking back at the fact that I know what those stories were. It was so painstakingly the same thing, rinse and repeat. But now we got something different. The Leaf Village 
is after Boruto's ass. What do you mean by that? They they think he is the traitor. They think he is the kid that was born from no family and is going to attack Kawaki, who is now supposedly the Hokage son. So you guys let me know. You guys let me know what your thoughts are on the new Burrito Boy uh, chapter. And if you're still in, if you're still reading the Burrito Boy series, I'm into it now. So um, I might be covering it, but I definitely want to be covering it now because it did get me excited. I did, like I said, I love Naruto. I love the story of Naruto, the tale of Naruto Uzuma. I love that shit. Like that's that's my shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I love it. So when when Boruto, Burrito Boy was announced, obviously I was excited. I was excited to see what they would do and uh, things of that nature. And then I, I was making myself get excited for chapters. And then slowly and surely, I couldn't help getting myself excited because there's a lot of things that just didn't make sense for me. Uh, characters that I grew up loving that just so all of a sudden got nerfed. And you can't even explain how they got nerfed, honestly, I, other than the fact that they're older and it's a new generation. But that that that's like... That, that's BS. There has to be, like, a reasoning for it. And, like, why is Shikamaru stupid in this series? I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to end it there. Or there's, I'm going to be nitpicking a lot of different things that I see in Burrito Boy's story. But I am excited for what's going to happen. Like I said, this is leading towards that in that meeting between Boruto and Kawaki. And it's interesting because we know Salad Girl, Sarada Uchiha, she isn't affected by what happened. So she might just follow Boruto and she might help him. She might become the Sasuke, if you will, and betray the leaf in order to go to then possibly come back. And you, the things can happen. You know what I'm saying. You know where I'm leading to.